The scientific story has been to say human nature is competitive. Nature can be read in tooth and claw, which is the classical way of thinking of Darwinian nature. But the reality is that cooperation is as much a part of that as survival of the fittest. Now, the story that we've all been telling ourselves since Darwin was that you got an alpha animal that's in charge, and everybody else bows down, and that justifies kingdom and hierarchy, and that's why we should treat our president like a king, And because that's just the natural order of things, isn't it? There were a couple of scientists that decided to test this hypothesis. There was this herd of red deer. They said, well, you know, let's watch the deer. So they put these video cameras in the trees, and they're watching the herd. And at some point in time, they've got to go to one of the watering holes. Now, this is not a small decision. If they go too soon, then some of the members won't get enough nutrients. If they go too late, then some of the members may be dehydrated. If they go at the wrong speed, some of the members may not keep up and be vulnerable to predators. And it's a cultural problem for the deer. When do they go to the watering hole? Which of the watering holes do they choose? And who makes the decision? And what they expected was that the wise elder alpha deer who every spring butted heads with all the other deer, that, that he would say, OK, guys, time to go. You know, I've decided. But that's not what they saw happen. Instead, what they saw happen was that as the deer were grazing, that some of them would start pointing at one of the three holes. And when the 51st percentage, say there was 100 deer, when the 51st deer pointed its head at one of the watering holes, so that a majority of them were pointing at one of the watering holes, within just a matter of moments, the entire herd would form together and go to that water hole. And very often, the alpha deer would be in the back going, where'd everybody go? And so they thought, well, this is really strange. I mean, you know, and it, over and over, day after day, the exact same thing. It was democracy. It, they were voting. What they found was that democracy was being played out literally every day by these animals. You know, I remember the first time I went scuba diving, and I'm seeing a school of fish going along, and all of a sudden they go, whoop, whoop, like this. I sit out in the backyard and watch a flock of starlings go by, and they're going like this, and then all of a sudden they're going like this, and then they're going like this. And how do they know? Well, it turns out when you do the slow motion photography, they're all voting literally with every wing beat or with every gill beat. They're voting hundreds of times a minute. And he said, you know, we found this from insects all the way up to primates. The basis of nature is cooperation and democracy. It's in our DNA. When Darwin wrote The Descent of Man, he mentioned survival of the fittest twice, and he mentioned the word love 95 times. He talked a lot about behaviors like conciliation, cooperation. He found in mammals all of the lineaments, as he put it, for the golden rule for the great religious ideals. The world is both cooperative and competitive. A story to show just who we've become. Once there was a native tribe that lived in peace and harmony for thousands of years, and every day the routine was the same. Hunters would go out from the tribe, and when they returned, the bounty from the hunt was shared equally by all members of the tribe. No one went hungry when food was available, not even the weak, the sick, or the elderly. One day, the most skilled hunter said, I'm the best hunter. I kill more than my share of deer. Why should I share the bounty of my hunt? And from that day forward, he began storing his meat in a high mountain cave. And then other skilled hunters said, we kill more than our share of deer too. 
Shouldn't we have the right to keep the bounty of our hunt? And they too began to store their meat in high mountain caves. And then something began to happen in the tribe that had never happened before. Some people, especially the old, the weak, and the sick, began to go hungry while others were well fed. In fact, it became so commonplace that no one even thought it unusual that some were starving while others had more than what they needed. And what's even more strange, the tribal elders began to teach their young to emulate the hoarding habits of these few. Now that story isn't true because it happened. It's true because it's happening. We are that tribe. I am that tribe.